शुक्लांबरथर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्याजेत सर्विघ्नोपात श्रुते स्मृतिपुराणल करुणाल नमा भगवत्दशंक लोकशंक नमस्ते now we will see the meanings of shri vishnu sahasranama based on shri shankaracharya bhashya for verse 90 first we will see the verse anur brihat krishas thulo guna bhran nirguno mahan adhritah swadhritah swasya pragvam sho vamsha vardhanah so the namas here in our <coughs> अणु बृहत् कृश स्थूल गुणभृत् निर्गुण महान् अधृत स्वधृत स्वास्थ्य प्रागवंश वंशवर्धन देर आर ट्वेल नाम स्र इन वी विल सी द मीनिंग्स ऑफ ईच ऑफ दीज वन बै वन द फर्स्ट नाम इज अणु सौक्ष्म्यातिशयशालिवा अणु the one who is endowed with extreme subtlety hence atom so in this nama bhagavan is glorified as anu extremely subtle entity because as we see in the vedas that <clears throat> eto vacho nivartante aprapya manasasah he is very subtle his form is very subtle so which is beyond the perception of the speech and also the mind so in the mundaka upanishad also we see esho nuratma chetasa veditavya so this atman is extremely subtle and he has to be known through the chetas what kind of a chetas in bhagavad gita acharya says that shastra acharyo padesha samskritam manah atma darshane karanam so it is not by the mind which is turned outwards by that the atman or the anu the extremely subtle paramatman shuddha chaitanya cannot be realized shastra acharya upadesha samskritam manah the mind that is refined by the upadesha or the teachings of the shastras and also the acharya such a refined mind can perceive can have the glimpses of the extremely subtle atman even in the kathopanishad we see that drishyate tu agriyaya buddhya the buddhi or the intellect which has become extremely refined agriya very sharp the sharpness to it given by the shastra and also the upadesha of guru only such minds can perceive the atman the paramatman the shuddha chaitanya and hence being incomprehensible or unintelligible to minds which are turned outwards he is indeed anuhu and also another sense that we can derive from this is anoraniyan mahato mahiyan bhagavan is all pervasive as he pervades the subtlest of the subtle and the greatest of the great so his subtlety because of his pure conscious nature that is pointed to by the term anu and also his pervasiveness from the smallest of the small things and to the greatest of the great things so that is also pointed out through this nama anuhu the second nama is brihat brihatvad brahmanatvacha brahma brihat <coughs> the one who is vast or the one who nourishes is brahman and that is brihat so the second nama is brihat the first nama was anu infinitesimally small and subtle here this nama is brihat <coughs> brihat normally means that which is very vast very big and brahmanatvat 
that which also nourishes so brahman is the one as was indicated he pervades the subtlest of the subtle and he also pervades the vast and great entities like akasha the prapancha and also the great jaladhi the oceans all that we see as being very vast pervasive and majestic so bhagavan pervades them also as he pervades the subtle atom so does he pervade the great vast entities and not only that that is one meaning of brihat brahmanatva uh, brihatva the vastness and then brahmana means so being the atman within us so he nourishes every each and every entity see as long as there is awareness consciousness within the body grows the body nourishes itself so being the cause of nourishment being the cause of activity so he is brahmanatva brihat and being as pervasive as vast entities like sea the space etc he is brihat महतो महीयान इति श्रुते हे सो टू पॉइंट टू दिस बृहत्व ऑफ भगवान आचार्य कोट्स फ्रॉम द कठोपनिषद महतो महीयान द थर्ड नाम इज कृषह अस्थूलम इति द्रव्यत्व प्रतिषेधात कृषह द वन हु इज नॉट स्टाउट और मैनिफेस्ट बाय दिस स्टेटमेंट द वन हुज सब्सटेंसनेस is negated so krisha normally means lean but in this context krisha is taken as an opposite to sthula asthula so sthula is manifest so then krisha refers to unmanifest so bhagavan here is unmanifest in his pure sachidananda swarupa bhagavan is asthula unmanifest imperceptible to the outwardly mind and the senses so that idea is brought out through this interpretation of acharya to this nama krsha the next nama is sthula स्थूल उपचर्य से सर्वात्म द वन हु इज स्टेटेड अ स्टाउट और मैनिफेस्ट इन द सेकेंड रीसेन एज ही इज एवरीथिंग सो इन द प्रीवियस नाम वॉज कृष लीन मीन्स द वन हु इज नॉट मैनिफेस्ट हियर टू एड टू दैट और टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट टू दैट और टू कंप्लीट द मीनिंग दट वॉज गिवन प्रीवियसली इट इज स्टेटेड दट द भगवान इज स्थूल ऑल्सो मीन्स द वन हु इज स्टाउट और द वन हु इज मैनिफेस्ट ऑल्सो इट इज नॉट दैट द भगवान मियरली रिमाइंड अस अन मैनिफेस्ट सो दिस मैनिफेस्ट वर्ल्ड दट इज ऑल्सो भगवान एंड आचार्य से स्थूल उपचर्य थे सो भगवान इज स्टेटेड स्थूल ऑल्सो इन द सेकेंडरी सेंस सो इट डजन मीन दट भगवान इज स्थूल ओनली ही ऑल्सो इज प्रसेंट इन द मैनिफेस्ट एंटिटीज एज ही इज इन हिज प्यूर अनमैनिफेस्ट सटल फॉर्म ऑफ सच्चिदानंद स्वरूप द नेक्स्ट नाम इज गुणभृत सत्वरज तमसा सृष्टि स्थिति लय कर्मसु अधिष्ठातृत्वा गुणभृत बीइंग द सबस्ट्रेटम ऑफ गुणा सत्व रजस एंड तमस द वन हु फेसिलिटेट्स द प्रोसेस ऑफ क्रिएशन सस्टेनेंस एंड डिसोल्यूशन सो द नाम हियर इज गुणभृत गुण एंड भृत सो विभर्ति मीन्स द वन हु होल्ड्स और सपोर्ट्स द वन हु इज द सबस्ट्रेटम द सबस्ट्रेटम ऑफ वॉट द गुणास सो भगवान हियर ई इज ग्लोरिफाइड एज द सबस्ट्रेटम ऑफ द गुणास वॉट आर द गुणास हियर रेफर टू द गुणास हियर इंडिकेटेड और सत्व रजस एंड तमस एंड वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ द थ्री गुणास इट इज दीज थ्री गुणास विच फेसिलिटेट creation sustenance and also dissolution 
creation by sattva, sustenance by rajas, and then dissolution by tamas. So, it is in the prakriti, these three gunas, when they are active, all these three processes of sat uh, creation, sustenance, and dissolution happens, and being the substratum or being the driving force of all these three gunas, the Bhagavan is the one who creates, sustains, and dissolves the the entire manifest world. Hence, he is glorified by this Nama, Gunabhrata. The next Nama is Nirgunaha, Vastutaha Gunabhavat Nirgunaha. In reality, the one who is bereft of all attributes. So, Nirguna, previously he was described as the one who supports or drives or is the substratum of the gunas yes of course bhagavan is the substratum of the gunas for their operations he is the driving force but he himself is not made up of the three gunas he is nistriguna or uh, even uh, bhagavan advises arjuna to transcend the gunas nistrai gunyo bhava arjuna O oh Arjuna, transcend these three gunas, only then you can be established in your true, pure, conscious nature. And hence, Bhagavan here, who himself is always established in his Sachidananda Swarupa, is Nirguna, beyond the influence of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas gunas. Kevalo Nirgunascha so, Bhagavan is glorified as Kevala, the one who is all alone in the pure form of consciousness, bereft of the impurities, imbalances and changes affected by the three gunas. The seventh Nama is Mahan, Shabdadi Rahitatvat, Niratishaya Sukshmatvat, Nitya Shuddha Sarvagatatvadinacha, Pratibandhakam dharmajatam tarkatopi yato vaktum nashakyam atayeva mahan. The one who is great as he is bereft of sound etc. Extremely subtle and always pure and all pervasive. Hence no limiting character can be attributed to him logically also. So, Bhagavan, the very form of Bhagavan is beyond the Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, means the, it can be taken as beyond the Tanmatras or the subtle creating elements or the objects of the senses are made up of Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa and Gandha. So, these are at the core of the five elements. So, the one who is not limited by the attributes of five elements and also Niratishaya Sukshma. He is extremely subtle as brought out by the first Nama Anuhu and then Nitya Shuddha Sarvagatatvadina. He is always Shuddha, pure, unchanging in his conscious form and he is not also limited he is sarvagata he is all pervasive so being the repository of all positive attributes uh, and uh, the one who is also in the form of pure consciousness so he is really great and that is how he has been declared in the Shruti Smritis and our sacred literature and hence he cannot be limited by any other factors even if one thinks logically even so that makes him the Paramatman the Absolute so how should an Absolute be? an Absolute should transcend all that is of a changing nature the Absolute should be subtle and the Absolute should be pure. So, if, uh, if a thing is described as Absolute, it should be endowed with all these qualities and Bhagavan is that Absolute Entity and hence as He is declared as the Absolute Entity, how can one even logically attribute anything that is limiting? So, Bhagavan is the repository of Satyam, Jnanam and Anantam. 
ಅನಂಗೊ ಅಶಬ್ದ ಅಶರೀರ ಅಸ್ಪರ್ಶಶ್ಚ ಮಹಾನ್ ಶುಚಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆಪಸ್ತಂಭ ಧರ್ಮ ಸೂತ್ರ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫೈಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಮಹಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಟು ಮಹತ್ವ ಶುಚಿ ಅನಂಗ ಅಶಬ್ದ ಅಶರೀರ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಸ್ಪರ್ಶ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ attributes make bhagavan mahan then the eighth nama is adhrutaha prithivyadinam dharakanam api dharakatvan nakena chidhriyata iti adhrutaha the one who is a substratum of those who support earth etc who in turn are substratum of others hence he is not supported or he is bereft of any further substratum hence he is a dhruta so na dhruta dhruta means the one who is supported na dhruta the one who is not supported so bhagavan is not supported by anyone else but he is the one who is the support and substratum of whom prithivi and others so earth the ananta the diggaja so the uh, adishesha the earth the diggajas all these for all these bhagavan is the substratum and these the adishesha the prithivi and the diggajas they further support higher or the creation which is above hence being the one who is the substratum of substratums themselves he is not supported by anything else so he is adhritah the next nama is swadhritah yadyevam kena dharyata ityashankyah svenaiva atmana dharyate iti swadhritah as he is without any substratum by whom is he supported if it may be asked to this it is stated the one who is supported by himself so previously it was indicated that all that is known to support others cannot support the bhagavan so hence he is adrutah the prithivi the adishesha the diggajas are themselves being supported by bhagavan and hence they cannot be the substratum of bhagavan and hence he is adrutah bhagavan narayana is adrutah then whom is he supported so then what is the substratum of the bhagavan is there any substratum for bhagavan to that the question is raised and answer is given svenaiva atmana means he is established in his own pure conscious nature so that so he is declared as swadrutah swa by himself dritah the one who is a substratum unto himself so to this we see the chandogya upanishad being quoted by acharya sa bhagavah kasmin pratishthitah iti sve mahimni so where is that ultimate pure consciousness established it is established in its own great glorious nature so that's why even in the yoga sutra we see तदा द्रष्टु स्वरूपे वस्थानम् सो द दृष्टा द पुरुषा द चैतन्य इज एस्टैब्लिश इन इट्स ट्रू प्योर ग्लोरियस नेचर इट्स ओन प्योर कॉन्शियस नेचर कॉन्शियसनेस इज नॉट फर्दर एस्टैब्लिश्ड और कॉन्शियसनेस itself does not require any further substratum it is the substratum of all other things so that is indicated by the nama swadhritah <coughs> the tenth nama is swasya there are a couple of interpretations here we will see them one by one shobhanam padmodara tala tamram abhirupatamam asya asyamiti swasya the one whose face is beautiful being endowed with the bronzy hue that can be seen in the base of the lotus so here there are two components su and asya 
Asya is face and then the face is Shobhana, beautiful face. So the face of the Bhagavan is described as beautiful. Acharya further elaborates, what is, how beautiful it is? It is a Tamram. It is, its form or its color is of a bronzy hue. It has or it is endowed with a bronzy hue. What kind of a bronzy hue? Padmodara Tala. So that bronzy color that can be seen in the base of a lotus, such hue, such beautiful color is the color of the face of Bhagavan which is Abhirupatamam, which is most beautiful and then in this, this form of Bhagavan can be meditated upon and hence the one who is endowed with such beautiful color in the face he is Swasya. There is a second interpretation Vedatmako Mahan Shabdarashihi Tasya Mukhan Nirgataha Purusharthopadeshartamitiva Swasya The one from whose mouth the great Vedic sounds emerged for guiding people to Purusharthas. He is Swasya. Here also Su, Asya are the two components, but here Asya refers to the mouth. Previously Asya referred to the face of Bhagavan, the countenance of Bhagavan was mentioned previously through the term Asya. Here Asya refers to the mouth, Shobhanam Asyam, the great and beautiful mouth of Bhagavan is described in the second interpretation. What is the greatness or the beauty of the mouth, the greatness or Mahan? The Mahatva or the greatness of the mouth of Bhagavan because is uh, due to the great Vedic sounds that emerged from the mouth of Bhagavan. Drag, Yeju, Sama and Atharvana Vedas, they emerged from the mouth of Bhagavan. Yasya Nishwasitam Vedaha. So, so, the one from whom the Vedic, the one from whose mouth the Vedic sounds emerged. So, that mouth is great and those Vedas, they guide the human beings to the four worthy goals of life, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha and hence so those Vedas that guide human beings to the goals, their ultimate goals in lives, they emerged from the mouth of the Bhagavan and hence he is glorified as Swasya. The one who has a very beautiful mouth. To this Acharya quotes that the Vedic sounds emerged from the Bhagavan. To that Acharya quotes Asya Mahato Bhutasya. So from this great entity Bhagavan Narayana, the Vedas emerged. The eleventh Nama is Pragvamshaha. Anyasya Vamshino Vamshaha Paschatyaha Asya Vamshaha Prapanchaha Prageva Na Paschatyaha Iti Pragvamshaha <coughs> The clan of others may be of later origin but his clan in the form of the world is earlier and not later. So there are two components here Prak and Vamsha Vamsha means the clan and prak means earlier so the one who created the earlier or the one who is connected to or the one who belongs to or the one who is associated to the earlier clan he is pragvamsha so whereas all other the surya vamsha and chandra vamsha all these vamsha's clans emerged later it is only after the creation of the world that all these vamsas emerged. The creation itself in the form of the world existed before all these later vamsas. And that creation is the family or the vamsha of Bhagavan. Means they are intimately associated with Bhagavan. Means it is from the Bhagavan that the prapancha emerged and hence the prapancha is create, considered 
as the vamsha of bhagavan as the clan or the kutumba of the bhagavan vasudhaiva kutumbakam so in that sense the entire creation or the prapancha is the clan of bhagavan and all other clans like surya chandra vamshas they emerged later hence the one who belongs to the the connected to the earlier clan or earlier vamsha he is pragvamsha the 12th nama is vamsha vardhana vamsham prapancham vardhayan chedayan va vamsha vardhana <coughs> the one who extends or destroys the clans so vamsha and vardhana are the two components here vamsha as we have seen is a clan the kutumbas the kulas and vardhana vardhana means the one who extends or uh, creates or nourishes he is vamsha vardhana the one who extends or creates or nourishes the various clans so be, being the sthiti karta the one who ensures the continuity of life in various clans and kutumbas he is vamsha vardhana vardhana also means chedana in amara kosha we see vardhanam chedane thadve vardhana also means chedana by convention there is a meaning of chedana to the word vardhana so the one who cuts the various clans the one who destroys the various clans he is also bhagavan in his parashurama avatara various clans of kshatriyas who were adharmis they were cut and destroyed and hence vamsha vardhana in the meaning of destroyer of vamshas can be taken to point to the parashurama avatara and vamsha vardhana in the sense of nourishing furthering ensuring the continuity of various clans can be taken as the sthiti kartr form or the one who maintains or who ensures the sustenance of this world and the various uh, lines of families so in that sense it can be taken when it is considered as the uh, vardhana to grow and to nourish so in this way the word vamsha vardhana has two shades of meanings thus with these 12 namas in verse 90 we have thus far seen 846 namas om tat sat shri krishna arpanamastu